this is more of just a few second clip. We're about to walk into the gas station because we forgot the pre back at the crib. Uh, so we're kind of in a solo situation right now. But uh, don't worry. We'll update you guys here in about, I don't know, probably 90 seconds, maybe upwards of 120. All right, Casamigos. Um, so I, this is actually my third attempt now of, of recording this. I recorded... Yeah, that's fine. Um, I recorded when I first left the house initially, then I had to stop at the gas station. I recorded again while I was getting gas and then the last 14 minutes. Um, but I keep getting too much off topic that like I'm losing the, uh, I guess you would even just call it the gist of the video. So two tops we're going to talk about um, is your pre-training kind of lineup, how you should be getting prepared and what to be more convenient. And then like the dieting and bulking phase before we get into the uh, um, actual lift today. So today, Yesterday was, or, you know, so I got my car back. Now my car was detailed yesterday, which ended up lining up perfectly because I didn't have my car all day yesterday. I could use my wife's car, but if you guys remember for the next like week or two, I'm going to take off chest. I'm um, just going to have that little impingement right here in the front delt. Um, so just, it's, it's just a smart decision. If you have an injury, I'm telling you from personal experience, if you guys have any sort of injury at all, just take time off the gym. That's pretty cool. Um, no, but no, seriously, if you have an injury, like if you're, if your quads, like you feel a little bit of fatigueness, maybe not like quite a tear, but a little pinch or something, a little nerve issue or just something at all, anything that doesn't seem like, oh, you know, I'm like hundred percent ready to go chill out, like take a, a, a week or so off that muscle group. I'm not saying go home or to McDonald's. Oh my gosh. Sorry guys. I, I, I told you guys, I'm not gonna be able to fix this. Um, I'm trying to get it to where I could be mounted back there. Um, cause I want you guys to have a good angle here. Um, whoops, let's get you guys back there. Oh my gosh. There we go. Um, now nah, we're actually pretty rocking. I'm trying to set up. So the tripod, I have like the extendable tripod that, you know, it, I can fold it down to like a handheld and like walk around with it and vlog basically. And then it can extend up to like six feet, whatever. Um, but the, the three, you know, um, I guess you could call them legs on the tripod. The two hit the floor and then the mat, but then there's like a little section that it just doesn't quite get to. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so annoying. Anyways, um, let's just get into this very briefly. So when it comes to training, I'm just going to skip all the stuff that I was trying to talk about and just stay on point here. You basically have two, and I'm trying to keep the um, see about the way from this. Cause I know this last clip, it was like rubbing a lot. Um, there's basically two set, you know, two parts, I should say not two parts. There's two, yeah, you call them parts. There's, there's your dieting phase. So when you're dieting, that doesn't just mean you're losing weight. Keep that in mind. If you're dieting, you could be gaining weight. You could be losing weight, whatever food you consume. That's what your diet consists of. People think, Oh, what diet are you on? If you're eating McDonald's and Taco Bell, like I was, you know, years ago, not even that long ago, you know, a couple years ago, um, not literally, but, you know, I was eating whatever is what I'm basically saying. You know, I wasn't tracking anything. Um, I was like, well, I would just think if I, as long as I ate a lot of meat and protein throughout the day, then I didn't really care about anything else. That's how I trained for a long time, which is why I got so much bigger. So you have two parts to a dieting phase. You have the bulking phase and the cutting phase or the bulking part and cutting part. So I'm, fin I'm going now to the second part of the second phase, basically meaning last year when I bulked, you know, last year and then August 1st, I started the cut and I cut, you know, over 30 pounds. It's a super successful cut, went from 248 to 218. I went lower than 218, but I didn't actually document it. So like my actual recorded lowest weight was 218. So, you know, 30 pounds I lost um, and then, you know, maintained that for like three or four months um, and then started the bulk again, like January, February. I, I, I didn't start bulking in January. <clears throat> it was probably around like March that I actually started like eating in a caloric surplus and really trying to put on muscle as much as I could and just train it like a monster. So March, April, May, June, July, August, now about five, six months of bulking, which is good. Honestly, if you're trying to make a real bulk, six to like nine months, you know, is, is, is a pretty good amount of time. You know, you're not really going to put on a lot of weight and muscle mass in three or four months. If you're just, if you're doing a four month bulk, because you have to understand Let's say you start, you start, you got, you cut down to 200, right? You're at 200 now. And now basically 
you have, let's say you're going to balk just for three or four months, um, whether it's a dirty balk or a lean balk, a dirty balk just means that you're eating literally pretty much anything. You're hitting your macros and then eating whatever on top of that. A lean balk is you're hitting your macros and that's it. So you're eating what your body needs to put on muscle and to put on weight, but you're doing it in a more of a controlled manner. Um, so with that being said, I don't even know where I was going with that. Literally, I have no idea where I was going with that. I don't remember. But I do got to get this pre in faster because I'm about to be at the gym soon. So, um, anyways, going into my cut now, right? So, lost 30 pounds. Then, and then, oh, yeah, you get your time limit. So, you know, three or four month bulk. The first month, you're really just putting on like water weight and then kind of resatiating your body and filling up your muscle with carbs. But you're not really going to put on any muscle, actual muscle mass, like anything maybe negligible, like a quarter of a pound or a half a pound, maybe, if that even, you know. Because basically you're saying if you start at 200, bulk for three months and then cut back down to that same level of body fat, you'd be, the, you'd be a pound heavier, meaning you didn't put on a pound of muscle in three months, you know what I mean, or sorry, 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 you didn't put on a pound of muscle in four weeks, I mean, um, so basically what I'm saying is a three or four month bulk, the first month, you're basically just filling out your body again, filling up with carbs, kind of getting a little bit more, you know, inflated, you could say, getting energized, that sort of thing, and then, um, you know, being in a caloric, getting used to being fed again, you know, um, like you have fed cardio or fasted cardio. Fasted cardio is um, like in my last cut, I did fasted dry cardio. So I didn't eat anything or drink anything, even water before my cardio. So every morning for you know, the the three months of the actual really hard work that I put in for dieting, um, it was four months total of cutting, but a 10 week program, and then a few intermittent weeks in between. Um, but like my actual programming with my diet coach was five weeks and then five weeks. Um, I was doing 30 minutes of cardio at least 30 minutes, sometimes 45 to 50 minutes, but a bare minimum of 30 minutes every morning fasted and dry. So no food, no water to really just kind of optimize and, you know, push fat burning to a higher level. The reason behind the logic, if you go to the gym and you just drank a gallon of water and, you know, you had 150 grams of carbs of white rice and, you know, let's say, you know, 92 grams, so let's say eight ounces of ground turkey and some whatever before the gym. When you get to the gym to go do cardio, you're going to start sweating off just that water that you've just been drinking. And you're going to be burning off the calories that you just ate in a, in, a, in a roundabout way. So when you go to the gym, no food, no water, you're almost like you can think of it as like starting from scratch. You're burning. You've slept throughout the night if you do morning cardio. You went to the restroom in the morning, I wake up, go to the bathroom, pee and everything. So my body is almost like in its most natural, leanest, and lowest weight state at that point. So then by going and doing cardio with no food or water, um, basically the energy that I'm burning is the fat in my body, right? And and I'm not sweating out water that I just drank. I'm, I'm trying to you know clean out my body and lose as much weight as I can. Now, that might be like negligible, some would say, but to me, I notice a lot of the difference. So when I would come back after cardio... I would have a lower weigh-in and be more tight, and I felt like I, I was more effective for me, and the results showed because I've lost 30 pounds. Now, not everybody has to do that. you got to find what works for you. But the reason I'm saying that is because now I'm going into, like, the second – I'm on the latter half of the second – of, like, my – the second phase again. Like, I'm – I've successfully balked and cut, successfully balked again, and now I'm, you know, about a week into the cut. So this – today's day four so monday tuesday wednesday thursday so i'm only four days in but so sunday will be the you know completing my seventh day of this cut and that'll be my first week's weigh-in um so just as like a a rule of thumb i guess what i'm trying to say is just um you have to you have to have you, you need to be tracking basically you can't just say oh well whatever let's just move on from that the point i'm trying to make for you guys is just the more that you care try to slam it because I'm like getting close to the gym. Um, when it comes to that dieting stuff is like, just, you need to bulk long enough and cut long enough. I don't want someone to cut. And then after a month, like I haven't lost 20 pounds. I'm like, yeah, it's been a month. And on the flip side, if you're bulking, like I was the example I was giving earlier for four months, 
and then go back into cut again. That first month, you were just kind of reflating in a sense, resatiating, just kind of filling out. And then month two, you're starting to get back in that routine of actually putting on some body fat, putting on some muscle. After in, into month two, you'll start to notice it in the mirror the weight gain, you know, just getting not like fat, like all non fat pieces of shit again. And then month three and four is when you start to really start to put on that muscle. But like just as you're getting into like the peak muscle building, month three and four, now you're gonna start cutting again. You're, you're not giving your body long enough time. Um, that's why, you know, bodybuilders, like, especially competitive bodybuilders, which we can learn a lot from, even if we're not competitive bodybuilders ourselves. like I competed when I was 15, but like, I'm not a competitive bodybuilder. I love bodybuilding and love working out and training, but I'm also very like, you know, I like working out because I like to be like active and fit and versatile. I could do backflips and shit, run long distances and shit. You know, I'm in martial arts and all that stuff. So point I'm trying to make is give yourself the time, right? Don't say, because you got to think, oh, six months is too long. I don't want to cut six months. How can I get that lean in three months? Six months is going to pass regardless. And six months from now, six months is going to have passed. Like a lot of people say, man, I'm, I'm 18. I don't want to spend the next 10 years. In, like if you want to be a doctor, I don't want to spend the next 10 years in college and, and, and schooling because then I'm going to be 28. Yeah, you're going to be 28 no matter what, which would be 28 and a doctor or 28 and you don't know what the fuck. Right. So I didn't I don't you know, I didn't, I didn't go to college or anything. I'd rather be I'm happy I took the route that I took. I'm just saying whatever you guys are doing, that time is going to pass regardless. So if you're like, man, I'm 400 pounds, I don't, I don't, I'm going to spend probably two years. It's going to take me to get to my shape I want to be in. We'll start now, man or girl, whoever's watching. Because if two years from now is going to pass, it's going to pass. So in two years from now, do you want to look back and be like, man? I could have been that weight. Fuck. Two years was not as bad as I thought. Or do you want to be like, man, I'm so happy I did it because now two years in, I look like a freaking beast. I look like an absolute freaking, uh, I, you would even consider to call it freak. Um, <clears throat> so just get, pre get prepared. That's all I'm trying to say. Be aware of little drinks like this. I was going to get a rock star. It was 250 calories. I picked this instead. Zero calories. Like little things like that. You don't just want to go to the gym and only crush energy drinks or like Red Bull or Monster or NOS. You want to drink a performance-based drink, so like a Bang Energy drink or a Rain or a Ghost Energy or, or a, um, a Celsius, like things that have like CoQ10 and vitamins and minerals, like vitamin B12 is another natural source of energy. And like in the Ghost Energy drinks or Gorilla Mine, they have the Alpha GPC, which is a mental stimulus. Actually, like I've my, – my personal experience is that it works. Uh, my material experience is like when I take that for a month and I don't take it for a couple weeks, I notice a lack of focus. Um, because it's designed to make you focus in the gym. It's not that you're weak. Just use performance enhancers to help you. Don't fucking take steroids and shit unless you want to be competitive, I guess. But um, supplements are just that. You need to have the diet. You need to have the training and the exercise. You need to have the hydration. You need to have the sleep, the recovery. All that stuff needs to be perfect for supplements to even have an effect. If you just say, you know, I'm going to take a scoop of pre-workout every day, a scoop of creatine every day, and take three scoops of protein every single day, and then just work out, you know – whatever the fuck, like that's really not going to help you at all. You need to be in a position where you're not only training hard, I'm just trying to go in really slow into the gym, but you're also focused on like optimizing your training. The supplements are just that. They are supplementing what you should already have done. If you look at the back of a fat burner pill, the fat burners only work if you're dieting and eating in a caloric deficit. If you're not, they're going to have virtually no imp impact on you at all. So, pulling in here like a whole bunch of people outside. Um, I'm gonna try to put the camera on. So that's the whole point I'm trying to make is just you need to keep focused on um, the fact of like. Oh, let me sure this all set up here. I'm gonna move this back a little bit. Oh, there we go. Um, that you're, you're, you're getting ready for the gym appropriately, right? So today we're about to go in and do back. So like I said, this week, um, not even this week. Cause again, I'm doing like chest, back, arms, legs. So like, it's not like for me, Mondays and Thursdays are chest days. It's, I hit every muscle group twice a week. It just, they're different every week because of my split that I do. So I'm taking off like probably the next four chest days. So like this is the first one I'm, tr I'm missing. 
Um, cause all right, I had a little impingement in my shoulder and like, just be smart with your body. And we're only 14 minutes in, so I'll cut it off during a minute. But, um, you know, like if, if, if you feel something like you're maybe you go to a really heavy leg day or really hard leg day or whatever, if you feel something like in your fucking teardrop on your quad or like you feel something pinching your calf or whatever the fuck, like if you feel something it just, you know what, that doesn't feel normal. It doesn't hurt. I'm not in pain. I'm not like limping, but something feels a little bit off. Then just call it. So, you know what, let me just take a week off of that muscle specifically, or if you're on a split like mine, I'm going to skip the next four chest days because I don't do like a push day because I think if you do a push day like chest, shoulders, and triceps, you like one one of the muscles is going to get the short end of the stick. If I go hard and do eight to, you know, seven to nine, seven to ten working sets of chest, you know, six, seven working sets of shoulders, by that time, I'm like fucking 12, 15 sets in, I'm like, I don't want to hit triceps. I'll just do two fucking burnout sets and call it a day. And you're never going to get big arms like that. Or if you go and do legs and you do six sets of squats to fucking failure, and then you sit down and say, I'm going to do two sets of hamstring curls and then I'll bounce. You're not going to get big hamstrings, that whole idea. But, um, yeah, just be intuitive with your training. Um, if you feel like, so my shoulder here, it, it's, it, I heard it in December of last year. Um, my diet coach, Brian said it was an anomaly that I was like, I was one of the only people he's worked with that was getting stronger while cutting. Not because I'm some freak, although that is true, but because my body was responding really well for, to consistency for the first time, like consistent with my training, consistency with my dieting, consistency with actually tracking my food and stuff. So I was getting my body what it needs. So I was putting on muscle and getting stronger, even though I was losing weight. So I was getting stronger into my cut, which is really cool. But I got to a level of leanness. My one buddy, Ryan, was like, hey, man, you probably shouldn't try going that heavy. And I did anyways. I picked up the 120-pound dumbbells for incline press. The 120 that I could throw around like nobody's biz. You know, we're talking 10, 12 reps, you know, a few sets. 110s were a little heavy, but I could still rock out, you know, sets of eight. 120s or maybe six to eight. Then the 120s, I just wanted to accomplish that goal for myself. Um, and when I got when I got the 120s up, I think I told the story before. But when I kicked the, the first dumbbell up, I kicked the second dumbbell up. I didn't feel like anything hurt. But it went like a little bit, like just a little discomfort for a second. I kind of pulled it back in, but like I was rocking. There's no pain at all. Nothing tore. I was like, all right, let me just roll with this set. So just did that set, dropped the dumbbells, continued the rest of my chest workout. And then that night and the next day, then it just started to really hurt. And it's, it's, I mean, that's been like eight months of that. So finally, after three or four months of that, I took off like a week entirely of training. Didn't touch any weights at all. Only did cardio and it completely healed. It was good to go. And then I was doing a house flip with my wife. Um, we have a real estate business that we do together. And we were flipping a house. And we had to do – we never do clear outs. But this time, the seller kind of screwed us up, whatever. We had to do the clean out. And I was pushing something really hard. And I just – I felt it. Just that little – little – because I didn't stretch. And I was just moving, throwing shit into a dumpster. And I just felt a little tweak. I'm like, fuck, dude. So I could tell that it wasn't fully healed yet. Um, so I'm just going to be proactive and take, like, the next two weeks off of chest. Um, not to give you guys all the details, but it's just smart your shoulders hurting, your back's hurting, whatever, just chill out. Like me not training chest for the next two weeks, I'm going to notice zero difference. My endurance isn't going to go down. My chest isn't going to shrink and get smaller. You know, it might be psychological. Oh my gosh, my chest is getting smaller. You're not losing muscle in 14 days. You're just not. Um, but getting a shoulder injury and being out for four, three, four, five, six months, especially the shoulder injury. Yeah. You're going to notice some gains lost there. So Today's, uh, we suggested it was chest. My car was going to detail, so I skipped entirely. So today's back. The two things I know I'm going to do, cable rows, pull downs, whatever else kind of uh, strikes my fancy. So I'll talk to you guys post-workout when I'm back in the car. All right. <coughs> we are post-back. Make sure the volume's on. All right, we're good. Maybe thinking, why am I sitting so far back? I'm in a fucking some sort of machine. Make sure it's all good. Not I know every car, a lot of cars have that kind of stuff where you can do like the, uh, you know, save the settings or whatever. But it's kind of cool because it like saves the car height, the steering wheel, like what level you want it at, like the rear view mirrors. Who gives a shit? <clears throat> Anyways, so I had to take a few minutes after back um, because I think back is one of those. Oh shit, I just took off for no reason. Oh my gosh, got it all 
always getting the wrong. This is starting to really bother me. Um, let's wait for these car, a couple of cars to go because I have to basically optimize it to where um, I got to wait for everybody to kind of be out of the way so I'm not slamming my tripod around. Um, I'm going to figure out some sort of configuration. It, it would be so easy if it swiveled the tripod, but it only goes up and down and then more like vertical, you know what I mean? Pans up and down, but it doesn't go left to right. I would have to like, whatever, it doesn't matter. So if that's the case, I could put it flat in the ground, but then you guys would have a horrible angle, you know what I mean? But if it's swiveled, we could take care of that, but we can't, so whatever. So I'm pulling out super slow, we got people behind me. But that was back, so we're a minute and a half into this clip. Um, back is one of those workouts um, that definitely, you know, it, it takes a lot out of you, you know what I mean? Because your back is a whole, I mean, you know, your whole posterior chain, like your hamstrings, your glutes, your back, some of your, you know, your, your, uh, oh yeah, I mean, that's really pretty much it. Um, but you got to think you got your whole lats that go from basically like your traps, you know, your traps go all the way up to like your neck, like way up here. A lot of people don't realize that it goes like way down to like almost like the middle of your back. And your traps are a big muscle. They're not just like sitting on here. People think like these are all your traps are your traps, like kind of fold over your back. Then you got your rhomboids, you got your teres, manor, minor, whatever, some random muscle group. You got your rear delts, and then obviously you got your lats, and then you got your spinal erectors that run all the way up to like basically the, where your spine attaches to your head, like way up here, like basically here, but on the back, very high all the way down to like your glutes. So a lot of stuff in the back, right? Spinal erectors, lats, rhomboids, maybe some other stuff here or there, rear delts, uh, traps. Like there's a lot of big muscles that um, – are all engaged when you do a pulling motion or whether that be like a rowing motion or a pulling down motion um, or even like a static hold. I think a couple a couple days ago, one of these clips. So I'm actually getting ahead right now, meaning I have like three or four lifts already recorded on here, but that I haven't posted yet. Um, just because I felt to myself, I'm like just because I don't have time to post something because I'm just you know busy at home and stuff and work doesn't mean I don't have time to record because I got to drive to and from the gym anyways. Right. So kind of like the logic that I had earlier with don't say I don't want to start cutting because it's going to take three months. Three months is going to pass anyways, you know, but we live in a world where everybody wants instant gratification. Um, you know, so I kind of get where people are coming from because I'm myself in that same way. But, um, you know, and, and it can be hard too. the older you get, like when you get like if you're, you know, starting off, like I started working out when I was like 14. That's when I started like the bodybuilding training. My brother, you know, stuff worked out. He didn't do competing or anything, but he kind of got me into it. He's like, hey, man, come to UXL once. I was like a freaking – I was young. I was like – I was either my eighth grade year. Like I wasn't even in high school yet. That's how young I was. You know what I mean? So um, I'm not a big advocate for like 14 and below training like heavy and hard. And like I'm, I'm not sure if it stunts your growth, but I know some people can face that. Um, luckily, I'm like the tallest, biggest person in my family. Um, I don't really know how tall I am. I, 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 it's the third time I brought this up. Because somebody asked me recently, and then I started to think, I'm like, I, one, when I was in the military, um, you know, they have you stand, like, very vertical. Like, you don't just stand there and they weigh, like, or measure your height. You stand there, you take your shoes off, um, and in the military, your head is, your hair is buzzed. Like, when you go to basic training, was what I'm talking about. Um, you know, when you're in, like, the, uh, what's it called when you first get there? The, the what was it, the 47th or reception? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. You're there for about a week or two before you actually start basic training, do all your medical in processing. Um, and you're like, you get like, you know, completely naked. It's your underwear, obviously. Your head's already shaved, so there's no like height advantage for your hair because I have like more luscious hair, I guess you could call it. You know, I'm blessed in that factor. Um, and then you take your shoes off, socks off. So it's like your heel is against the bottom corner of the wall. And they have you stand and like, they have you stand like straight up. Like, what's your actual height? Not like, what's your height with like a rounded back or like with, you know, a shitty posture, like what's your full height? 